Welcome back. Now, in a bid to save the economy of the northern region of Nigeria during the COVID-19 pandemic, the Northern State Governors Forum has agreed that the lockdown of the region will be costly and has decided that each state would adopt the measure suitable to its setting. They also stated that no state in the region has received palliatives from the federal government, despite the fact that some of them have recorded cases, while others are making desperate efforts to prevent any outbreak. And joining us still to discuss this is uh, political analyst Bolaho Olojede. Thank you, Bolaho, for staying with us. Yeah, good to be here. All right. Now, um, th th this, is, this is a claim, and I, I want us to look at this critically. Now, the, the governors did say that they've resolved to strengthen preventive measures against the pandemic through enhanced boundary controls and surveillance, as well as restriction of movement. My, my question is this now. What was the efficacy of this at this point? given the fact that the pandemic is here with us already, how effective would this be? Yeah, the, the, the connection is a bit poor. Okay, okay. Can, you, can you repeat the question? Now, the governors, the Northern Governors Forum, did say that they resolved to strengthen preventive measures against the pandemic through enhanced boundary controls and surveillance, as well as restriction of movement. What's the efficacy of this at this point, given the fact that the, the pandemic is already here with us? Do you see this being effective? Um, I, I, I miss a bit of that, but I'll try to uh, respond based on what I think you are, you are trying to uh, say. Uh, the some some states you're talking about the states in the north that are not on lockdown. Is, is, is that the question? No, some states, some northern governors in the north have said the lockdown is not an option as it will be very costly for them, and so they've resolved to strengthening. There are preventive measures against the pandemic through enhanced boundary controls and surveillance, as well as restriction of movement. Now, I am saying, in the light of the fact that the COVID-19 pandemic is already here with us, what is the f efficacy of these measures they want to put in place? Uh, well, it, it could be argued, um, that, I mean, there are two sides to this. If you ask me, because we don't really have enough information uh, a better thing might be to just, if you want to shut down, shut down everywhere. Uh, but I'm also aware that some, in, in, in most jurisdictions, the effects, the concentrations are not evenly spread. So a place like Lagos and Abuja, from the sample data that we have, I call that uh, 343 thing, is, is a mere sample. Because in the, in, the, in the population of 200 million people, we have done only 5,000 tests. So that sample uh, does not say much. But whatever it says, if you just look, if you just assume that that sample is representative of what is going on, uh, one will be tempted to say that if you are able to curtail things in Lagos and Abuja, you will have solved most of the problems. And that therefore, those other states can just take some uh, lighter measures, not a total lockdown uh, like uh, Lagos, Ogwa, and Abuja uh, uh, are currently under. If you look at the fact that Abuja and Lagos alone account for 71% of the entire uh, uh, COVID numbers that we have. So it means that if you take care of Abuja and Lagos, you are taking care of 71% of the problem. That is an assumption based on that thing. But if everybody we have tested is 5,000, there's a major problem with that thing. It's a real problem. All right. And yeah. for me, that could be a justification for a further lockdown, this new two weeks that we have, hoping that things that are missing from our data, we will use these two weeks to fix them. We need a Nigerian analysis, not just uh, using the WHO templates and making a report that tells us that only 343 cases are in Nigeria. These things are not real. I'm sure the people uh, uh, running this data, they know that this thing is not real. So we need to enhance our testing capacity dramatically and be able to test a lot more people and know exactly what the Nigeria-specific situation is. We cannot continue to do copy and paste from what is going on in Spain or America. We must know what exactly is going on in Nigeria. All right. Well, let's look at some of the measures they, they thought about um, as ways to strengthen and prevent um, against the pandemic. They, they talked about enhanced boundary controls and surveillance, as well as restriction of movement. Now, I would wonder, shouldn't this have been the, the, the adoption, the, first, the very first adoption of the federal government from the get-go? 
before we have the, the increased case of COVID-19 as it is right now? Um, to a certain extent, uh, the, 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 if, if I hear you right, uh, the, the, the cases are increasing. We, we started the lockdown fairly early enough. Uh, as, as at the time we had a lockdown in our case, if you take a, a major country like America, uh, there, not much has happened as, as, as when they were where we are right now. Uh, okay. I think there's a connection lost. Well, can you hear me? All right, we'll quickly go for a quick break and let's we'll try to reconnect with Bella Hall. Stay with us. This is Plus Politics on Plus TV Africa. And thank you for staying with us. Joining us during the break is legal practitioner Raymond Nkanebe. Raymond, thank you for joining us, Raymond. Oh, and we still have with us by Skype and political analyst Bolan Ho Lodja there. Bolan Ho, thank you for staying still with us. Thanks for having me. All right, Raymond, quickly, I just want to take a reaction like I've done with um, Lodja there. The, the, the presidential speech yesterday on the extension of the cessation order, the lockdown by the president. Um, what, what fears did he allay for you and what issues did he address to you that were pretty pertinent in that um, national address yesterday? Let, let's go off with that, Raymond. Okay, um, thank you very much. Um, well, uh, the president's speech yesterday was, uh, was expected, given that uh, the initial period of the uh, lockdown was exhausted. So it was natural that Nigerians looked for more direction from the presidency. Um, looking at the speech, um, I think um, it has addressed uh, the key issues that, that, um, that has agitated the minds of many Nigerians, particularly issues around the palliatives to cushion the effects of the lockdown. You know, um, it is almost globally agreed that the, the, there is no better model to handle this situation than initiating uh, a lockdown policies and then try to manage the uh, identified cases to avoid an exponential spread. So uh, for me, I, I expected Mr. President, even though he had indicated interest to expand the social register to accommodate more Nigerians, uh, since we have having another two weeks uh, period of this, but there was no details as to how that could be done. Because if you know, observe so far in the last two weeks, we've had some allegations of corruption in the management of the, uh, of the fiscal expansionary measures, like the conditional cash transfer and all of that. So I had expected Mr. President yesterday to address in specifics the actual way we can actually get to the poorest of the poor in this country who need uh, this, this um, uh, relief materials in form of either cash or food items to actually cushion the effect of this, um, uh, this economic hardship brought about by, by the pandemic. But that was not forthcoming. All we heard was that they are going to expand the social register and then make sure that uh, more Nigerians are accommodated. But there was no specifics as to how this could be achieved. Some persons have argued that we should go the BVN hall, so that this money will actually get to actual Nigerians, rather than having a situation whereby you say you are disbursing money and you cannot even account for what has been disbursed, where and where was it disbursed, who are the beneficiaries, and all of that. Uh, though I, I understand that um, the unbanked population in this country is quite large. Uh, from the data we have I'm working with, it's only about 38.5 million Nigerians who have BVN, you understand. So that leaves up with uh, uh, about 150 to 160 million Nigerians who are unbanked. But that doesn't mean all of these numbers are actually uh, need this to live materials. Some persons are pretty comfortable, but I know that within this number, there are persons who are poor and who would also need it. So for me, uh, I had expected a clearer way 
how we can achieve this policy of um, ameliorating the economic hardship of this pandemic so that we will not have what we are seeing in places like Lagos, Ogun State, where persons are beginning to take the laws into their hands just to make sure that they feed. Now, interestingly, you did talk about the state where people are beginning to take laws into their hands. Um, yes. this, this was anticipated, isn't it, because there's bound to be a security implication of this extension of the lockdown. Sure. What, what in, your own, um, in your own views this might be? And do you see a total observance of this extension of this lockdown? Uh, I'm, quite, or I'm quite skeptical that, the, the, uh, the, uh, that we're going to see um, a, a full compliance with this phase of the lockdown. Because I, sometimes I come outside my estate and I see people live in clusters. So people are actually not even complying with this initiative of social distancing and all of that. At, at best, people have only left their workplaces and left their places of business and are now clustering in their social spaces, you understand, as in, in their residential areas. So I really don't see how the compliance level can be achieved with the economic hardships out there. So I'm a bit skeptical. I'm a bit skeptical about that. But I, I just hope somehow that Nigerians will want to cooperate. But the cooperation of Nigerians, to a large extent, would be dependent to the extent to which the government makes sure that these palliatives actually get to them. Otherwise, about, yeah, I don't think they will, be le they will be left with no option but to take the laws into their hands to make sure that they fit, even if it means flouting the social distancing directives and then compromising the whole model that we are operating on to tackle this pandemic. All right, talking about the, the model we're operating on, on, on tackling the pandemic, some Norton governors have come out and say they cannot lock down the North and they give their specific reasons. And in, in the view of that reason, they've resolved to strengthen preventive measures against the pandemic through enhanced boundary controls and surveillance, as well as restriction. Now, in the light, in the light of the ongoing pandemic, how effective do you think this will be? Uh, well, the views of the, of the Northern governors is quite uh, disturbing to an extent. Is it valid? Even though, quite disturbing, even, but is it valid? Is it what? Is it valid? Uh, you know, you, it's, it's, I, I don't think that's an objective question. They cited economic that reasons. Yes Their no reasons answer. were quite economical. You said? Their reasons for, for, for their reason was quite economical. The reason they gave was economical. Is it valid? Yeah, it's, it's, it's economical, but I also think it's also emotional. You understand? And this virus is something we are fighting with science and not emotions. You understand? I, I was talking to some friends today, and I said, what is the effect of having an exponential, what is the risk of having an exponential spread because we are trying to cushion the effect of the economic hardships? You understand? As against all of us trying to understand that these are actually perilous times, and each of us have to make our respective sacrifices. You understand? So that we can see how we can push for some more time to see if we can flatten this curve to a great extent. So the decision of the Northern governors might, might be economically right, but I see a thing of sentiment beclouding it. Do you understand? So it's risky for me. They are talking about, about border control and all of that. This is a very social virus that has been proven to travel at the speed of even thought. So I don't think they have the, the, uh, the apparatus or the, the machinery in place to enforce these border controls and all of that that would not lead to a community spread. We are talking about the northern part of the country that is very porous. You have people moving frequently. You know, So it's quite... It's quite risky. So I, I just hope at the end of the day, they have made the right call. All right, now this is Raymond. They, they also did say and agreed that at the moment, each state would adopt the measure suitable to its setting because um, total lockdown 
um, will actually not be the best option for them. Now, given the three states where the secession order actually operates, Lagos, Ogun, and the Federal Capital Territory, don't you think they should have been given this option to, of the adoption as, as a better option to the total and complete lockdown? Uh, sorry, I, I think I missed you. Sorry. Now, they also did say, or they resolved, they said that, um, that they also said that they agreed that at the moment, each state will adopt measures suitable to its setting because okay, the lockdown, okay, okay. Yes, yes. the lockdown is not an option. Now, yes. given Lagos, Ogun, and the Federal Capital Territory, don't you think this, this adoption, this option of adoption should have been extended to this state instead of the um, obtainable total lockdown which we have right now? Well, I, I, you know, uh, we are dealing, these are the, what we might call the, uh, the, the, the flashpoint states where we have this issue, you understand? So I don't think the, the measures to tackle it here should be uh, completely the same in places where uh, we don't have uh, 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 the, uh, uh, a high number of, of cases yet. You understand? Yes. And I think that might be the thinking that is underpinning the decision of the Northern governors to um, allow their people to move, to, to move freely since they don't have uh, enough cases yet. But the risk in that is that we don't know the number of persons who have the virus already there because this is an asymptomatic virus. You understand? Yes. Within the 14 day period of incubation, you can't even imagine how far it can spread. So that's what nullifies the thinking of the Northern Governor's uh, uh, initiative. But talking as far whether the policy in Lagos, Ogun, and FCT Abuja should be the way it is, I think it, it should be because this is where we have, uh, this is where the, the, the breakout took effect from. And we have the highest number in these places, particularly Lagos and the FCT. Raymond Nkanebe, Lego Protectioner, thank you for joining us on Plus Politics and for your contribution. I'm grateful. And joining me live now in the studio is a legal practitioner, Obi Ajeba. Thank you, Ms. Obi, for joining us on Plus Thank Politics. Now, quickly, I want to take a reaction to the president's nationwide address yesterday, um, the continuation of the secession order to these three states, Lagos, Ogo, and the Federal Capital Territory. Now, was this anticipated? Did you expect it was going to be a continuation? Well, after his... Um Press whatever Garba Shehu yes. gave that Garibashi, yes. gave that um, speech. We were we knew that was what was coming, but is it is it really what we need in Nigeria? Must we toe the line of Europe um, and America? Must we? Why can't we have a homegrown solution to an uh, international problem? We are Nigerians. We are peculiar. We have our peculiar problems. And we shouldn't say because it worked for China, it, it, it worked for... In England, they've been, they've been at home for up to, up to a month now. And the thing is still raging on. So why can't we look for our own homegrown solution to this thing than locking down everybody and not giving them palliatives? Now, interesting, you did, you did talk about homegrown solutions, which is what some of the northern governors of Kamada say, that I think every, every state should be a, allowed to come up with a specific tailored measures to put in place to prevent the spread of this virus. And many people have argued the fact that prior to the secession order from Mr. President, the first secession order, that the state governor, um, Le Babajide Saonlu, was on top of this matter. Mm -hmm. And that this secession order only truncated what the good work he was doing already. Now, what are some of those um, um, solutions, alternatives you think they would have considered before putting a total lockdown on these three the states? The total lockdown was not, it did not emanate from the governor of Lagos State. Yeah, from the president. It was an ill-advised um, thing from, on the part of the president. Yes. Because before you lock down people that there's no social welfare system, you must think, how are these people going to survive? And poverty and um, hunger really makes people take, uh, take decisions that doesn't make sense. That's number one. Number two, why would the president now impose a lockdown on three states, two states plus the federal capital, and then the north now feel that they are rosy and they will not? No, if if the level of if the level of um, people that have that in Lagos is in the north, then the Mr. President must insist that the north locks down. 
There are no secret cows anymore. Yeah. Now, we have a situation in our hand. The, the lockdown order is in, the extension is in place. Yes. Um, and we know, prior to this time, people were already taken to the streets complaining mm -hmm. of hunger. And a great, a great number of Nigerians make their, their daily living from what they can make daily. Yeah. Uh, do you see a total compliance of, of this lockdown order in, in the next couple of days and in two the, weeks time? The, the first 14 days was just too much. Now to add another 14 days, I don't know how these people are going to do it. What would you recommend? I would recommend, first of all, Lagos State has been magnanimous enough to share some foodstuffs. But unfortunately, like everything um, politician, some of them were hijacked. I would recommend that the mosque and the churches and the government stand up and take over. The mosque and the churches, they should cook food and share even not members of their mosque. The churches should um, cook food and give out to everybody, regardless of whether you're a Christian or a Muslim. And then the government should now sit back and talk to their commissioners and look for a way that these foods that they are giving should get to the people that need it. Not a politician, no. Legal practitioner Obi Ajibo, thank you for your short time with us and for your contribution. We'll go for a quick break now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. The extension of the lockdown order by the president comes from a good place, as it could potentially reduce the rise of coronavirus cases in Nigeria. Now, the cases in Nigeria currently stands at 343, with a fast rate of recovery and discharge. However, while I believe that Nigerians should be patient and learn to sacrifice for the sake of the country, I also believe the politics promise and even much more should be provided to all Nigerians, especially those who are in need of it. The reality is people in this country are hungry and living in poverty, even before the pandemic. So now more that two states and the federal capital territory are on the lockdown. The president's address might have inspired hope in some, but some Nigerians have been launched into a spate of panic as reports of robberies from around the states have increased. However, nothing has been heard from the government of this. My message to the president is this. A lockdown is not a complete and effective solution. The people who put you in office are suffering, and this is time to prove that you're truly on top of the affairs of the nation and write your name in the stone of history in Nigeria. And for the Northern governors who have agreed to not lock down their state, I ask a question. A better economy or human lives, which is more important to you? A lockdown is not necessary, but when you prioritize religious activities, a full-on breakout is inevitable. I ask Nigerians to please be patient during the season. It will not last forever. And if you will, please reach out and help those around you and make a difference. We will conquer this together. And that's all for tonight. Thank you for staying up with us. Plus Politics, we'll be back same time tomorrow. Do have a good evening.